Hey, MJ Rodriguez. Hello, Mr. Stephen Canals. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Look at your face beat for the gods, girl. Where I mean, going? listen, I had to put a little dew on my face just to give a little glow, <laughs> you know, a little shine, a little lip, you know? Mm-hmm. Just a and little, these times, little Right, right. And these times, you still got to be fabulous. You can't, like, you can't fault it. I love How that shirt. You? Spreading your wings like a butterfly. Listen, it's important. You know this, Stephen. This it's it's important to make sure we give a little color every single day too. Mm-hmm. I mean, listen. I I was just talking and telling you like how you always come on the scene with a fresh, clean face and always hair sitting. So like, <laughs> trying, we, trying. Right. I'm about to say you're giving me all these compliments. Let me just like shed them upon you too. <laughs> <laughs> and the nails. Okay, girl. So I did a little secret shindig not too long ago. Don't want to mm-hmm. tell anyone just yet about it. But um, yeah, these are gonna be in a little, a little something, something. Oh, yeah, a okay. little something, something. So, what it. have you been doing in this time, Stephen? Like, how have you been like managing in this time with like mm. all of the? Because I know you're busy. I've seen so many things like on social media, in the press. Mm-hmm. You're just mm-hmm. busy, even in a time of quarantine. So, what's that like? Um. Well, uh, it's been real busy, you know. Uh-huh. It, it, well, the beginning of quarantine was interesting. I was feeling a little, very quickly, I was feeling taxed and not particularly energetic or energized by the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I took about five, the first five weeks of quarantine, so it started like mid-March. Mm-hmm. You know, I really just allowed myself uh, a moment to sit back and and I didn't force myself to to be creative or to create. Um, I had to learn in this period how to be kind with myself, mm-hmm. um, and that was a really interesting journey. Um, and then, yeah, like five six weeks in, I thought, okay, you really have to get back into it because being creative and specifically writing, it really is a muscle, and mm-hmm. it will atrophy if you're not working out every day. And so. You know, I just little by little, you know, I'd wake up and force myself to do a little bit of writing and research. And, and now it's just been, you know, full steam ahead. And right. about a week ago, I had a, a new project called 81 Words Announced, which is this limited. I'm, I'm going to uh, write with, with FX about the beginnings mm-hmm. of the LGBT movement and have some other fun things in the works as well. So it's been a good it's been a, a weird time to be inside, but it's been a really productive period. And yeah, how about you? How's it been Same. for you? Same. I mean, I love, and also I love that, child, that's everything. I mean, to see where we've come, obviously you, because you're the like ringleader, ringleader, you're one of the ringleaders of, you know, hoes and just writers in, in the industry. So congratulations on everything, everything, Thank like you. from the bottom of my heart, congratulations. Thank you, love. Thank you. I, of course. Um, me, I've been doing the same thing. I've been just trying to, one, I mean, in the beginning, let me start from the beginning. In the beginning, it was a trial sometime because it was new and a lot of us didn't know what to do. We knew that we had work, but we didn't know how we were going to handle it. So in that time I did become a little, uh, reclusive and to myself and, you know, I had to really mentally get my head together. But then after a while, you know, that creative stint came in and I just started writing I started doing a lot of recordings and singing. And I've also been trying to just make sure I, I keep my face out there as much as possible. You know, trying to keep get the exposure and, you know, mm-hmm. s- let my fans know what I'm doing. And, you know, they've been right. the biggest, they've been the biggest thing for me now. Aside from us not seeing each other every single day when we're on set, we talk to each right. other, but then you have the fans that are always like adamant and there when we're busy. Mm-hmm. So I've been just trying to keep in touch with them and, also, I've just been just trying to make sure I, I stay mentally healthy through this time because mm-hmm. it's important mm-hmm. to be able to sustain knowing that you could go back into an environment of work or knowing that, you know, there's still things that are opening up. So you, you, you may have to go inside. You may have to, you have to really relearn yeah. things. So I've been relearning and also creating. That's great. I have a question for you based on what you were just saying, which is, you know, you and I have had conversations mm-hmm. privately about how uh, Pose working on the show um, in many ways has not only saved us, but healed us, right? The Mm -hmm. power of, for me, putting words on the page and for you inhabiting someone like Blanca. And so I wonder in this period and specifically in this year where you've had 
such an incredible and monumental rise and have really established yourself as a real force and a talent in this industry, what has it felt like for you this year to not have, to, you know, obviously you still have all the attention and, and, you know, fans of the show and fans of you and your work reaching mm-hmm. out, but we didn't have the third season premiere. We were right in the beginning of shooting it when everything shot down. So what did that feel like? What has it felt like for you to not have that outlet of the show and specifically Blanca this year? I have to admit it's been a little challenging because I love working on the show. I love being on set. I love what I do. I love acting. You know, I love being a part of an industry that has a conglomerate of artists that are just like me. And now the diaspora is opening up for us a little bit more when it comes Mm. to having spaces for trans women being in those spaces. So when that's kind of shut out, it almost, and not shut out purposely, obviously, due to Miss Rona, but when it when it yeah. shuts out, you go back into the mode of like, okay, well, I have to start finding things to do until we start working again. Mm-hmm. Um, and also knowing that there's a possibility that I might not be able to do it only because of Rona and knowing that there has to be certain precautions, um, precautions taken and everything. So it's taken yeah. a, a big weight on me, us being in, only starting filming in two episodes and just having that notice of us having the halt production, it really made me think, wow, this could happen at any moment. And you really have to really be respectful of time and respectful of life and also be humble of what you have and also know that there are other people out there that they don't have it. So it was a lot of emotional and mental ups and downs. Mm. Um, and I got through it. I got through it because, I yeah. mean, my family is still here. My post family is still here. We're obviously still set for a third season. You know, it's not like it's not happening. But there's always that doubt. There's always that feeling. Mm. There's always that worry. And, um, yeah, as a human being, as an actress, and I'm sure any actress can attest to this, we're always worried about our work because that's mm-hmm. what we love to do. So, um, yeah, yeah, that was something for me. And I'm getting through it. Good. Good. Tell me about what has it felt like for you to, to play Blanca? You know, what has the, obviously the response to that character and specifically your inhabiting her um, you know, you've been met with a lot of love and, and you just received so much attention and accolades, which is really, uh, which is amazing and, and so beautiful and so richly deserved. But what for you, what does it really mean for you to play her? Ooh, man, what it means for me to play Blanca Mm. There's so many things, Stephen Child. You don't ask me a really hard question. Child. <laughs> it's it's it means a lot, and that's just like that's extremely vague. But I can't really put it in, into words. That's how miraculous it is, honestly. Because I got to really create a character, and also create it with the person who wrote it, you, and also had it directed by Ryan, and with somebody who's prolific in the industry. It mm-hmm. meant a lot because I got to really build a character who is pretty similar to who I am. Um, Not exactly like me, but very similar to who I am. And I got to really just build her from from ground up and for people to see her growth. And that's all I wanted people to see and what what she would exhibit in that time and how she can move and grow in that time. You know, um, and it's been a joy. It's been a joy. And I love the show tremendously i love the the set work i love the cast members i love every single person that's on that set and that's what makes it so fun is that we all get up there we work our asses off excuse my language mm-hmm. but we work hard and we take our jobs very seriously and we're extremely professional but we also have fun in the work that we yeah. do and that's the best part of being on that show is that we can build characters up from ground up you know from a time where you you didn't even know if, if the, the show was going to even get picked up and your work happens, gets picked yeah. up and 
it sprouts into this beautiful, beautiful flower. So that's what I think of Blanca and the, the journey with her. I have a question for you though. Mm. So speaking of Blanca, what was it like writing her character and the other characters of Pose? How did you really come together in creating these women and also a lot of these LGBTQI men who are part of the show? You know, obviously uh, the show is paying homage to ballroom right you know the early starts of ballroom and I think I like many people's first understanding or interaction with ballroom came from Jenny Livingston's documentary Paris is Mm -hmm. Burning Um, but the the very beginnings of Pose started for me in 2004 when I was in college after watching Paris is Burning and thinking that would make a really great television show. And at the time I wasn't out yet. Mm. And so the story really centered around the character of Damon uh, because I always imagined what you see in the beginning of the Pose pilot when he's kicked out of his home by his parents for being gay. That's what I always imagined what happened to me. And so Mm -hmm. that was the beginnings of the narrative. And then obviously I, you know, growing up, you know, Afro-Latino, like growing up in a family that's mixed, that's both Mm -hmm, Puerto Rican mm -hmm. and Black. Um, I, you know, I've had really incredible, really strong women in my life. And so obviously it was important then to put him in the hands of a woman who was going to treat him the way he deserved to be treated, you know, as a human, Mm -hmm. someone who was going to embrace him and love him and show him that he has gifts. And you know, and so at the core of the story, obviously, is a family drama, but that was the very beginnings, you know, and obviously, like, in the earlier drafts, like, Blanca wasn't called Blanca, she had a different name, um, mm-hmm. but the, the show was always really centered around the relationship between this boy and his new mom, you know, this chosen family that the two of them create together. Um, mm-hmm. In the process of then having the show picked up by Ryan, it, the, the story then obviously began to expand and grow because the, one of the benefits to working with Ryan Murphy is that I think in the beginning, my approach to story was like this, like I had horse blinders on and what Ryan mm-hmm. did was he effectively came and just sort of widened the scope. Of yes. It. Um, mm-hmm. And so in the widening, uh, in the very first draft of Pose that I ever wrote, um, Damon, Damon was actually a sex worker. And Mm. so we see him working as a sex worker. And in the process of talking the show out with Ryan, we realize, oh, there's there's a really interesting story to be told there around sex work. But we also were really, really fascinated by the character of Venus Extravaganza in in the doc. And Mm. a lot of the conversations that Ryan and I had early on were around what would Venus's life have been if she hadn't been killed? Right. And so in asking that question, that was where we then created the character of Angel. Angel, right. Um, and then the characters um, of specifically of, of uh, Candy and Lulu, that actually came out of the casting process. So mm. it was meeting all of you incredible women and hearing your stories. And we went into those meetings this is like like realty is that we basically right. knew exactly who we wanted at the beginning right? right so i remember when we saw your tape specifically um because the process was alexa fogel our casting director did six months of you know going out and looking for folks and then she sent those tapes to all of our all of us as the producers of the show we watched them mm-hmm. and i think we had about seven to eight auditions for every character from there we decided we would meet with about three actors for each character and then from there we then made our decisions and so I remember distinctly when we watched your tape out loud I said she reminds me of all the girls I went to high school with and so immediately you know MJ Rodriguez was at the top of our list for Blanca And when we went into that room you know again it was it was you remember because you were there you were in your audition but it was the meeting with you it was having conversation with you it was you went through uh, two scenes and then it was in the conversations about what those scenes meant for you that when you walked out of that room, it was like, for sure, we found our Blanca. Like, I know I had goosebumps and was like, she's going to be incredible. She's going to kill this role. But we met with other women, obviously, and, and Haley and Angelica were two people who we also had met with. 
And mm -hmm. we loved them so much that we went back to the page and we said, we have to write, write new characters in. just so that we could keep them on the show because we didn't want to lose anybody. True. I think that is so beautiful. Okay, can I just tell you that is so beautiful? I've always been so nervous to ask you questions about the show. I don't know why. It's just me being <laughs> insecure. Away. Okay, I've, I, it's me insecure. Just like you know, I'm. I, I have this thing with me where it's just hard for me to ask questions. But I just think that's so beautiful to hear how the characters were built. I never. I'll never forget my audition day. I'll never forget that. I was nervous as all hell. Everybody was sitting in that room, and it was just. It was exhilarating and still nerve-wracking because I was just like, oh my God, these are like legit ass people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But so here's I, my question for you because oh, okay. I'm curious, okay. you know, because, I, you know, I, so I didn't read nervousness from you in your audition. You came in, my perception of you was that you came in really confident. Like when you walked out of that room, I was like, ooh, like homegirl walked in here like this role is mine. That was the energy that you gave, right? Um, I'm curious for you though, having gone through the process and knowing, you know, you were, you played Angel in Rent, mm -hmm. um, you know, you and I have talked about the early beginnings where, you know, you went to performing arts school, um, mm -hmm. you know, so you've, you've done your time, like you really put your work in and your effort to work on your craft, not only as an actor, but also as a singer. And mm -hmm. so I, I wonder for you, what does it mean to reflect on coming into an audition for this role mm -hmm. that's in a show produced and created, co-created by Ryan Murphy that's gonna air on FX and now to be number one on the call sheet. Ooh. Like what does, when you think about that, like what, and I, I understand that maybe because you're still in it, it might be hard to articulate, but mm -hmm. you know, if you allow yourself to think about it, where does that take you? I think about the process of preparation mm. and organize, organizing what my mama had taught me from a child. And I was always a kid who had so much energy. Mm. And I'm not talking about jumping Girl, around. You still have a lot of energy now. <laughs> I do, I do, you're right. I'm, I was gonna like try to shun away the jumping around cause I still do it on set. Um, but the the other part of the energy was me having it and not knowing where to put it and my mom she was just like we have to put her somewhere where she can exert this energy into what she loves and it just mm. so happens that she loves being dramatic and she loves to sing and she's good at being dramatic too so she put me into obviously in jpack and you know i do camp broadway um as i got into this bracket of like 14 17 through 14 through 17 I knew that I wanted to establish myself establish myself as an actress I knew that from mm. from the jump I had done Cam Broadway I had done numerous amounts of performing arts um schools and I knew that I didn't want to be on Broadway but I knew that it was a beautiful stepping stone to where I really wanted to get to and at some point someone would see me uh, the preparation process, though, with all of that, being a kid who was born and raised in North New Jersey, um, and also running back and forth to New York City to the ballroom scene, mm. also still trying to find a place even in the acting realm, mm -hmm. all of that built me up. It didn't put me down, it built me up, especially, obviously, the ballroom scene. That was the place where I felt comfortable. I wasn't there every single day, but I was there. I actually, my house father just hit me up recently and hmm. actually told me he wants to see me side note but all of those things built me up and when this came into play I guess the confidence had already been built up because of what I had prepared for hmm. what I knew I had in me and also the work that had been put in for the years Cam Broadway, New Jersey Performing Arts Center, Berkeley College of Music, Rent and then just like a conglomerate of other things that had happened. Right, right. That whole process was so, it was nerve wracking, but it was, it, was, it was the confidence that brought me through to see that, okay, there's a possibility that I may, just may get this part. I just mm -hmm. may. So when I walked into that room, I was nervous, it's all hell. I was confident though, because I knew 
the work that I had put in and how badly I wanted to tell the story of not only Blanca, but the other descriptions that were written in that breakdown. Mm-hmm. And now when it happened, I was extremely thrown for a loop because that's when I was in complete shock. I didn't know something like a woman like myself would be able to be on television screens around the world. I didn't think that was possible. I didn't even think Mm. it would even get to that point, you know? Mm. Um, And it happened. It happened. And I thank you and Ryan, you already know the thank yous. Well, thank you. The immenseness of how I feel about that. And I'm about to get emotional, so gotta get Mm. that together. But um, yeah, it's, it was, it was, beautiful and and nerve-wracking and all of those things wrapped up into one and I couldn't ask for it I would do it all over again because I love Mm. I love my work I just love my work so Stephen what did it take speaking of journeys what did it Mm. take for you to really solidify and feel validated in not only the work that you've done on Pose, but the work that you will be doing in the future and how it's going to actually be making a staple. It's not going to be going anywhere. How do you feel about that? Hmm. Um, yeah, that's such a huge question. I think that's similar to the question I asked you earlier. Or, you know, it... it Because ultimately, I think my takeaway from what you're asking is just what do I what do I envision or what do I hope the the lasting legacy of the show to be? Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it's funny. When I was doing press for the, we were in the midst of the first season. um, And actually I think it was right after the first season had aired and we were getting all these accolades, right? Which was Mm -hmm. surprising to me because you really don't know how people are going to react. It was, Um, yeah. You know, it was shocking. I think for all Mm -hmm. of us and, and, you know, for me, a lot of my surprise came from having spent years in and out of rooms being told that that's, that original script had no value, that, you know, no one was ever going to give me the money to make it. Mm-hmm. Who's the audience for a show like this? Where does it live? So my feeling when it suddenly was out in the world and people embraced it was, wait, how is this happening? Like, it felt very surreal. And in many ways, right. it still does. Mm -hmm. Um, but in talking about the success of it, the thing that I always told folks in the beginning, and I still feel this way now, uh, is that I will know that this show was a success when you and the other women on the show who are having a trans experience will be able to go out into the world beyond Pose and have other opportunities as actors and not just to play other trans characters, but just to play any woman. So that was where it started for me. I think Mm -hmm. I'm at a place now where I Mm -hmm. wouldn't take that even a step further and say, Mm -hmm. I think Pose's true legacy will be in seeing other, not only trans, but trans and queer, Black, Indigenous, people of color having opportunities to also tell their story. Right. right. Because at the moment, Pose is really the only show that is centering, that is about and for trans women of color. Right. And so where are all the other, where are the other trans narratives? Right. Like, like Pose can't be the only one. And mm-hmm. so for me, I, that is my hope. That is my wish. That is what I want the lasting legacy of Pose to be. And, and I'm hopeful that we'll get there. That because of the work that we are doing in collaboration that Mm -hmm. we'll continue to see more doors kick down that we'll continue to see more stories told and i think that in the way that you just a moment ago very unapologetically have said i worked on my craft you know the reason why this moment is happening for you right now as an actor is because Mm -hmm. it's not just that the that this opportunity was presented to you but it was that you were prepared and ready to receive Mm -hmm. it And so, you know, that I think is what's important. And I hope from this moment that we'll continue to see other folks emboldened by the work that we're doing. And I think to be honest with you, like as a side note, it's already happening Mm -hmm. because like I've never shared this with you, but I, the day that we were filming the, we were filming the very last ball scene for the finale. It was when Mm -hmm. you receive um, or when Blanca receives 
mother of the year. Mm -hmm. And we were filming, you know, you, Gwyneth Porter Payton was, was filming the finale. It's really beautiful scene. And, and you were up on the, the boys' shoulders in mm -hmm. the ballroom. And I remember we had cut for a moment and there was, there was a turnaround and I ran into the restroom and I can't remember their names, but there were two women, um, both black trans women from mm -hmm. ballroom who had been, you know, in all of the, the ballroom scenes as background actors for the entirety of the first season. And they approached me with tears in their eyes and they were like, we just want to say thank you for the show. And I was like, well, no, I was like, thank you for being here. And one of the women took my hand and she said, I just need to tell you that I always imagined having a career as an actor. And then when I transitioned, realized that probably isn't going to happen for me. Yeah. She was like, I cannot begin to tell you how powerful it is to be on this set and to see my sisters, to see, and she specifically said, to see MJ celebrated and to see her being directed by Janet Mock mm -hmm. and to know that all of these women are going to be on a show that's going to air on FX. She was like, it's just, it's given me the hope to know that I absolutely can have a career and that I have the right to push for it to happen. You know, that's the, that's the power. That's the power of the show. Yeah. That's the power of the work that you're doing. You know, you don't even realize the number of people that just in you, not only playing this character, but in living in your, authentically in your truth, how you have inspired people to do the same. Um, vice versa. I was, I, I'm glad you said what you said, because I, I was going to literally piggyback and say, it is going to happen because you deserve it. And that's exactly what we were sent here to do, is to simply do our work and create. I mean, that's what every single actor and, and artist in general is out there doing. So I think that is beautiful. And thank you. Thank you so much, Stephen. Oh, thank what? you. What are you talking about? What? Thank you. <laughs> oh, damn. But well, then we just gonna keep sharing the thank you, giving the compliments. Um, so. Tell me, I have, a, I have another question for you. I'm yeah. curious because obviously, you know, we're, we're talking about the show in these, in these very heady, like, you know, in, in, uh, important ways, but we obviously, as you pointed out earlier, we have a lot of fun. We do a lot of laughter. I always tell people, whatever, funny enough, someone just asked me yesterday on the phone. Mm -hmm. They were like, how's MJ like? Please tell me that she's a lovely person. And I was like, MJ's the best person. What are you talking about? Like, um, but, and I think it's funny because I always tell people, I'm like, MJ is like, like a big kid. I, like, this is the thing I, I love. Um, like, I you know, am. MJ loves comics and manga. Like, MJ will be, you know, she's drawing in between scenes. Like, she is, she's always so singing. Like, MJ always has a song to sing. Yep. <laughs> I love it. Like, you know, I'll, I will harmonia harmonize off key with her. So my question for you is... Not off key, because there are many times that you've been on key. Listen. <laughs> but what is your, like, what is your favorite moment? Like, I mean, it might be hard to pick just one, and maybe mm -hmm. it's just a collection of a bunch, but, like, you know, we have a lot of fun on set, but what is, like, what are your favorite memories, or, like, what's your favorite memory about being on set? So one of, one of my favorite memories was the girls, the, uh, the girls trip. That mm. was episode nine of season yeah. two, that was my favorite, favorite moment because it got to show all, just us as women going out to the beach and enjoying ourselves, obviously tagging along the storyline of what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> and it got to, it just got to show us in a light of human light. Like it showed us as human beings and um, it showed also how we deserve love. But the mm. number one scene that I will say that is still my favorite until this day was first season. Um, and it was when Blanca walked into that room in Helena's office mm. and told her son, I mean, told Helena that her son was her child and she was his mother. Mm -hmm. That was a defining moment for me because not mm -hmm. only did it solidify the work that a lot of mothers around the world should be doing with their sons who are of the LGBTQIA community or any queer kid of that community. But even aside from the personal, within the professional realm, it solidified my leadership. And I really, really, really didn't know that until years had gone by. You mm. know, I had to find my worth four, four weeks ago, maybe even to a month ago, you know, and 
when I look back at that scene, I really saw a strong individual there, a character who is willing to fight for anyone, mm-hmm. anyone who is on her side, simply because mm-hmm. she knows she wants to do good and she wants to raise them up. That's it. When I had that scene, it really turned me out. And those tears, those were real tears. You know, like those weren't no fake tears. Those were real tears. It was obviously, you know, me channeling it and making sure that I acted in between it, but it was also tears of joy being in that space and knowing I could deliver a, a, a monologue like that to a well-received actress who's mm-hmm. been in the scene for years, who has worked mm-hmm. hard and who has a, a scroll of work that she's done. You know what I mean? Yeah. We love that, Charlene. We do love Charlene. We love her a lot. And she has laid a lot of foundation for a lot of us out there. A lot mm-hmm. of people don't, if they don't know, they better check. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? But Hello. like, exactly. But that was the moment where I realized that, oh my God, you're a leading lady. You're mm-hmm. a leading woman of this show. I you're saying, that that you are the mother of each and every last one of these kids that are on the show. How do you digest something like that in like in the first season? And as time went by, I grew. In the first episode. (laughs) Excuse me, yes, in the first episode too at that. Like it was, it was defining for me and it was almost so defining that it was hard to digest Mm. because sometimes I don't even like looking at myself from my own lens. Mm. And I, I had, it took me two years. It took me two years to really see my work. So that was my wow. favorite scene. And it's still my favorite scene until this day. Mm, that's my favorite scene also. Well, I, have a, both- I have a few scenes. I have a few scenes that I really love, but I will say that one is, is whenever I'm on like any panels, if they ask for a clip of the show, I always mm-hmm. say, show the clip of Blanca going into Helena's office and telling her she needs to give Damon a shot at that dance. Mm-hmm. I love it. I, it's like a, it's a combination of realty. So that monologue that you gave was actually written by Brad Falchuk and it's beautiful. Wow. Um, he, he really, he slayed it on the page. So I, I you know, I bow to him. Mm-hmm. But I, you know, the thing about it is, is it isn't just the words, right? I think that this is any show creator is going to say this, right? Which is, it isn't just about the story and, and the words on the page, but it's how it is then embodied and then imbued with humanity by the performer Mm. and the power of an mj rodriguez performance for me is in that moment it is the way there's something in your voice it's like the crack in your voice when you're like he's so young you know they're just it to me it's it's just a it's a beautiful performance and i love it and it's one of my favorites as well yeah well then we we on the same page great minds think alike (laughs) the work was beautiful the work was beautiful the work is is so special and we're kind we're, well we're out of time now we took oh, up okay. our 30 minutes but um you know i hope that you know how valued you are not only by me but really by anyone anyone who tunes into the show you know like consistently i cannot tell you the number of times that i have been out in the world and approached by people where they're like and that MJ Rodriguez, you know, or they say, like, having Blanca come into my home every week has changed how I feel about trans people, transness, trans women. Um, you know, I've had a, quite a few mothers approach me to say, mm-hmm. I actually feel like having Blanca uh, in, in, in my life has now impacted the way that I mother. Mm. So I hope that you realize that you represent so much for so many people. Um, And I hope that you just never, ever, ever dim your shine for anybody. Like, please continue to shine brightly. (laughs) Shine bright. Always. Thank you. And vice versa, Stephen. It's been, and it's obviously, it's still going to be, it's been an amazing journey working with you you have lifted me up in the most craziest times and I really appreciate you for that I remember moments of us sitting outside on a step and you telling Mm -hmm. me some great advice about my chakras and about how I need to really align myself and also uplifting me and letting me know this is going to be real so get ready and I cannot thank you enough and I I, forgive me for not saying that enough but I want to let you know 
thank you because it's been a joy and I can't wait until we get back on set again to really turn this out. We got to give them more. Hello. We got to give them more. Hello. <laughs> Miss MJ Rodriguez, I love you so much. I love you too. I love you too from the bottom of my heart. Likewise. Mm -hmm.